Welcome back everyone. This is the second part of my how to make a successful Grim Dawn build video. The advanced video for it. Now I'm going to show you a hardcore character before we get into Grim, Grim Tools and making our own advanced build. I'm going to show you a hardcore character where uh, it's more of an advanced, advanced, uh, advanced build that you can make, but it's still It's still it's still made with with a lot of thought and uh, creativity rather than just looking online for someone's build and copying it, <coughs> which I find extremely boring. So this is my Kabbalist, which is a necromancer and a cultist. A little before I kill some stuff, a little about how it works. I'm getting Curse of Frailty to give them minus vitality resist. This is a super vit max out vitality damage build. It's got a lot of attack speed as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm got Sigil for sustain and doing vitality damage. Witchfire for attack speed and vitality damage. Pox, I'm gonna end, end up making Pox only one point, but for now it's good for leveling. For some vitality damage and bleed damage. Necromancer, I've got Harboring of Sold for attack speed and uh, attack damage converted to health for sustain and vitality damage. Ravenous Earth, I'm gonna probably keep it leveled. It's pretty good. Uh, does vitality damage and poison damage, but mostly vitality since I'm I'm getting bonus vitality damage mostly. I'm gonna reduce their damage for for one second with it. Eventually, I'm gonna max this out and reduce their damage by a lot to be a little tankier. Siphon Souls for he for healing. Blood Boil for them doing less offensive ability and vit vitality damage. Reaping Strike for some life steal and vitality damage. Uh, Necrotic eggs for Edge for an AoE melee attack and vitality decay. Spectral Wrath for uh, minus vitality resist on enemies. And Mark of Torment just for some surviving on bosses and stuff for damage absorption. <clears throat> I'm eventually going to max out Spectral Binding for more health, but I don't need it right now. It's fine at one point for now. Now the Devotions. Uh, it's just some kind of interesting Devotions here, because I'm going kind of... I'm going to use a Shield. I'm going to get Shield Maiden, so I'm going kind of tanky. But at the same time, and Dryad and Tortoise and uh, Turtle Shell, but at the same time I'm getting Vitality Devotions. Mainly I'm trying to get Ratosh as soon as possible, so I can get... The minus vitality resist on enemies that gets down to minus 20 percent resistance on enemies once you max out the level on that so basically i went crossroads first i think or no i went i went to, uh, turtle shell first <coughs> so i got uh crossroads here tortoise into dryad and then i got uh a green and got bat and then i got i uh i got ghoul I think I actually got a point in Crossroads here and got Ghoul, but then refunded it after Ghoul paid for itself. Which you can do, by the way. I got Spider um, for more green so I could get Ratosh. I have ten, exactly 10 green. And then I got Windigo for a chance. It does Vitality damage, plus it helps heal you. And I got Eel. Uh, mostly I'm just getting Eel so that I can get Shield Maiden. And once Shield Maiden pays, the blue pays for itself, I'll, I'll refund the Eel. So I'll use the shield there. I don't remember what the last couple devotion points I'm going to spend are, but I have it on Grim Tools. I'll show, show that later. So basically... Uh, I was using XP pots to level this. I think I got it to level 67 within since last night, and like probably 7 hours or something or less. But, so... Um, I'll just fight a couple enemies just like with my last basic build that I showed you. I'll fight the same enemies, pretty much. So this, I'm right clicking the bloody pox. Left click is actually on Troll Ridge, which is from Mistborn Talisman. It's a, it's, a ba it's a primary attack ability that it's better than just using basic attack, that's why I've got it. If I find an item with, better, with a better basic attack skill, I'll use that. But Troll Ridge has charge levels. It does physical damage, but it minuses my offensive ability, so I don't crit as much. But this character's offensive ability is going to be terrible, so it's not, it doesn't have any offensive ability devotions. See, chance to crit 0%. I don't care about critting with this build at all. 
I'm just trying to lifesteal and have defensive ability and kill stuff really fast with fast attacks. And it's hybrid, it's a hybrid build, so you can... See, it's the Flesh Hawk, so I'm going to mark up Torment it, so it's not hurting me as much. It's a hybrid build, so you can either go up to it and face, face tank stuff, but if there's a lot of stuff for like a group of three elites or something, you won't necessarily want to do that. And you can just curse it, slow it, kite it a little bit, use some kiting skills. There's a lot of kiting, there's a lot of spellcaster spells, skills in here too. It's not just all melee skills, there's actually the only melee skill is the troll rage. It's a, it's a it's a pretty good hardcore viable build and the, and the the reason I like it so much is I don't I'm not sure but I don't know if anyone else has come up with a build quite similar to this. I mean, I'm sure you know no idea is original and whatnot, but I I really felt like uh, making a a melee vitality damage cabalist with a shield isn't that common. Also well, you, I have physical damage converted to aether damage here. What would be really great is to find a weapon that does physical converted to vitality damage because I have so much. How much? I have so much vitality percentage. Vitality damage percentage is 706%. So, my aether is only uh, 434%. So, aether's still okay. I'm still getting a little aether from that Ratosh devotion. But I want to do mostly vitality. See, like stuff stuff gets me down to half health a lot, but then I I'm healing so fast that like I can usually face tank stuff a lot. I have to use a potion once in a while. I did not mean to accidentally use that potion, but I mean this is I feel like the DPS on this build for hardcore is actually pretty decent for hardcore. Like, yeah, I can make a glass cannon does a bit more DPS, but at this point, uh, having a hardcore character with this much sustain is really nice. This guy is definitely wanting to mark with the mark on him, mark of torment on him. So he's you're taking 50% less damage from him and you're doing it to him. Trying to think if there's anything else I want to explain about this build. It has really good resistances. And that's the thing I didn't talk about, but... I'm using a lot of components that give me better resistances. And so already on Elite, I'm almost maxed out on all my resistances. On Elite, which is... Usually you have to wait until level 70 and get revered in a faction. And then you get armor augments to get max resistances. But you can get them sooner if you look for green items with good resistances. And then use... Uh, components like molten skin if you're low on fire resist and that you know or dense fur on this for cold actually I'm 41% over maximum for cold so obviously that shouldn't be in there anymore I'm gonna put a rigid shell in there instead so what you can do is you can take the dense fur out since I have eight since I have 121% cold resist right now I don't need there we go still have max cold and then we're gonna put a rigid shell in for lightning resist if your poison was low, you could put in an uh, uh, anti-venom salve. Where's the rigid shell? Craft one of those, put that in there. There, now our lightning's even better. So, so that's, that's this build. I'm excited to level that later on tonight with more XP pots. I'm trying to get it to level 100 as soon as possible. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> I need to find some more health items though, because my health is kind of low for this level. Uh, yeah. So anyway, on to the uh, Grim Tools. We're gonna do Grim Tools now. So this build is right here, I believe. Yeah. So this is my end goal, level 100 with this build. So. I'm maxing out all, all the Ravenous Earths, maxing out Reaping Strike, maxing out Necrotic Edge, 
for more vitality damage and sustain. And then three points in Consecrated Blade because I don't have anything giving me plus physical damage. But I have some things that give plus chaos damage. Not a lot, but it's better than physical. And also, uh, well, actually, this vulnerability doesn't give minus chaos resist, so maybe I don't want to do that, actually. Actually, yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. This doesn't give cast, minus cast resist either. So we might not even need Blood of Drake here. We might not even need all these points. We could put it in something else, a Necromancer. Like, let's see. Uh, there's nothing else to put in Necromancer, though. I guess we could go like Raven for Elemental Resist or something. I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't. I'll, I'll think of something, but yeah, something like that. Put some less points in there or more points in Raven if you want. But basically it's all vitality and attack speed. You could put in Fevered Rage to troll people and, and multiplayer because it speeds up the enemies and makes them do more damage. <laughs> oh, so sad if you did that in hardcore though, multiplayer. So the end devotions for this build though, I talked about them before in game. So we got Ritash, and then we got Shield Maiden. Oh yeah, and then we ended up getting Scales of uh, Ulkama also, because look at this. You wouldn't expect it to be over here, but there's... Uh, this last one does Vitality Damage, which you don't, wouldn't expect to be over on the yellow side. But it also gives you more sustain. A really good sustain. 132% of that damage is converted to health. And you get Energy Leech, which is... Energy Leech is actually pretty good, because I'm having some energy problems with this build. I have to use Push. Energy potions a lot. 20% chance with hit, bound the spectral binding. And then we've got Ulo to get the cleansing waters, which is always nice to remove beneficial auras from foes and uh, remove debuffs from yourself every every 20 seconds. It's kind of nice, especially on boss fights. And then some chaos and poison resist in these two up here. Okay, so now we're gonna. That was my uh, my my newest hardcore build, which I'm having a lot of fun with, and I haven't seen a build like it, and I felt, I felt good about trying something new, and or at least what I thought was new, and uh, trying it out without you know looking it up for someone to tell me what build to make. That's why I'm doing this video so people can make some good builds without feeling like they have to, you know look something up online once their once their build fails and then you know oh I gotta look up a good build now so I can beat ultimate especially ultimate hardcore and then this is another build my friend uh, uh, smiley slimy nose goblin and I came up with which is just hilarious so the whole point of this build is to do retaliation damage but also max up mark of torment which reflects damage to bosses and stuff and then, uh, <laughs> and then fevered rage stuff, so it does more damage to us, <laughs> like a lot more damage to us. And we're just gonna build super tanky, get all the tanky devotions, and just take all this damage and reflect it with mark of torment and with also with devotion re retaliation abilities. And um, Raven also retaliates, gives you two hundred ninety one lightning retaliation here, and then. Uh, Normally people do retaliation build with a soldier and shaman, for example, like a warder, but so here's here's the devotion tree, which is kind of nuts. So with this build, but basically you get all the retaliation devotions. With Grim Tools is nice because you can search for retaliation R E T, and it puts a bright red star for all the retaliation stars are. Right, so so we're getting the tanky shield stuff. For retaliation and then we're gonna have all sorts of gear that does retaliation and reflect damage uh, yeah so it'll, it'll it, I don't know if it'll work or not it might not it might work it might not we're not sure we're gonna test it out and see and if it's really good we might even make one in hardcore messenger of war is the best retaliation constellation just about this one's really good too okay now let's now let's go to go back to grim tools and let's make a whole new advanced build. Uh, I've never done this build before. I thought about doing um, a 
Inquisitor Shaman Lightning Build, okay? Inquisitor Shaman Lightning Build. <clears throat> it's gonna be, it's, again, it's gonna be more for hardcore. So it's not gonna be complete glass cannon. It's not gonna be complete tank either. It'll be kinda in the middle, a lot of DPS, but hopefully kinda tanky too. So basically for in Inquisitor, we're gonna have to get, I think we're actually gonna wanna max it out. Cause, cause I think if we're gonna be close to enemies here, we're gonna need Aura of Censure. Give him minus elemental resist for the lightning. We're gonna need max Inquisitor seal for uh, damage absorption for us and elemental resist. Plus the crit damage here would be nice. Um, I mean, you can also null field to have a, you know, while you're standing in it, have a higher chance to avoid projectiles, which is nice. Deadly aim is nice for crit damage. These are all ranged abilities, so unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be ranged. Although we could go ranged. I'll, I don't know. Uh, savagery for our primary attack because it is lightning and it's also. We're speeding up our attack with it. We don't need Devouring Swarm because that's minus vitality and bleeding resist. This is also bleeding. Um, we're going to need Wind Devils for Electrocute Damage, which I've never actually used Wind Devil, but I bet it's pretty good. This gives, this is the most important part of Wind Devil. Raging Tempest gives a minus elemental resist, which is so important. It's more of a, an advanced thing people don't always know about, but it's so important to reduce enemy resist of the damage type you're going for. It does so much more damage. Say that, say that you an enemy has 80% 80, 80 resist, right? Uh, and you do 100 damage to them, you're actually only doing 20 damage to them. But if you reduce the resist by only 30%, then you're doing 50 damage to them. So 30% reduce, reduce resist, you're doing over double the amount of damage. That you do tw Instead of 20 damage, you do 50, which is over double with just a 30% minus reduction there. Uh, we probably don't don't want any of this. Yeah, we don't need to get that many levels in. Shaman. Uh, you can use pets if you want. I don't really like pets. Get like a point in these maybe for devotions if we need it. Primal Strike, strike also does lightning damage. Um, we could get it as like a just a stun ability and use it every three seconds on top of savagery. This also does lightning damage. This also does actually actually we're gonna go more caster, so we definitely need Storm Totem. And we definitely need Windigo Totem for the sustain. This we don't really need, but we could get one point in it for some just because sometimes we get a lot of bu buffs that buff all shaman skills in. Uh anything else in Inquisitor we want? I think this is minus chaos resist, which is so stupid. I don't know why. There's a minus chaos resist thing on a and a minus ether resist on an ability that doesn't do any chaos or ether damage. I don't really get this whole Inquisitor thing sometimes. Point point in Horn of Gandar for I guess confuse if we want it. Stormbox lowers the defensive ability, which is gonna be great for doing more crits. So we're gonna go offensive here. We have to decide between Stormbox and Primal Strike. I think I think Primal Strike with the stun isn't really that necessary. I think Primal Strike's better with the two-handed weapon anyway. Yeah, it requires a two-handed weapon anyway, and we're going to use a shield, so... Can't get that. Uh, we're getting max Stormbox for minus defensive ability on enemies and some more lightning damage. Convert it to Aether, but we don't want to. This tethers enemies to do more lightning and electric damage and slow, which is going to be good for our kiting. And this, actually, we don't really need... We don't necessarily need this. But we'll put a point in it anyway, just to see. Because it, you know, it can confuse. It does confuse the target. It does. It doesn't. Uh, it's not a percent chance to confuse. So it's nice to just be able to confuse stuff and an AOE ability. But we could get one more point in that somehow if we took something out of. Oh wait, one less in shaman. There we go. This does. Uh, Strikes nearby foes. We probably want to max that out too, actually. Okay, I don't know if I, I think this is. I think we're actually going to want to do a uh, more of a caster build with this. To we can still go up to stuff and 
We have so we have just have so many spell skills that we don't need like a basic attack type of skill. I don't think we need savagery here. So max this out. Finish maxing this out. Uh, a few points left. There's also I oh, could just get like more tanky with some of this. Something like this. Yeah. So you're gonna cast Windelver, you're gonna cast Storm Totem, and you're gonna cast Stormbox and also Inquisitor Seal. Inquisitor Seal, uh, just to protect yourself while you cast your spells. Like if you were hitting with a weapon, you'd also want that weapon. If you were like doing basic attack stuff, you'd want that weapon to also have uh, uh, life steal so that you'd have the sustain. But I think so. We're just gonna go most mostly uh, mostly cast ability or not not quite like my Cabalist with the shield. I think it'll be better for this particular class combination. So quickly, the lightning devotions. So you see the lightning devotions here. I've never built a Spear of the Heavens build, but I think it'll be really good. Altos, uh, chance on critical attack. We're going to do a lot of critical attacks, and it's going to reduce their lightning resist. So we definitely want Altos. And there might be a way to get Altos and Spear of the Heavens, but I'm not sure because... Yeah, there should be. I think there's, with the expansion, I think there's enough points. So I'll just, you know, pretty much just get the lightning stuff quickly. Um, and see if that works out. Uh, we need, what do we need for that? We need Ascendant for that. We don't need Ascendant for that, and we don't need Ascendant for this. So we might not want to get Tempest at all. Also, the active ability on Tempest is stupid. It's 10 second. 10 second recharge, which is kind of garbage. Um, chaos. We need chaos for that, and we need chaos for this. So we'll go chaos. And vulture is resistances, and it's not all. Yeah, it's resistances and and like stat buffs. So we can get vulture. And now we need one more chaos, and uh, we need some more blue too. This is. Uh, this is just, oh, Viper reduces elemental resist automatically, so we definitely need Viper. And um, now we have enough chaos for that, we have enough for this one. Yeah, we have enough for that, so now we need green and we need eight more blue. Let's get the blue first. Let's see, this does lightning resist. Uh, we could just get... more blue green this imp does green and blue so we'll get we'll get imp even though it does fire damage which isn't great for us but it gives us green and blue and we can always change this later but so we need seven more green how do we just get hog for offensive ability actually uh <clears throat> scholar's light for elemental damage <clears throat> uh, and then what do we need here we need four more green Three more green. So, three more green. Can get Quill, I guess. Does elemental damage as well. So now we have enough to get Ultos for the lightning damage. We don't necessarily have to get the Chaos Resist point. Uh, and. We should be have, we should be able to get Spirit of the Heavens too. We just need to get like Sailor's Guide or something, which is good for movement speed. Sailor's Guide, and then we got enough points to get all of Spirit of the Heavens for lightning and ether damage. Mostly for the lightning, since we're not doing much ether except ether except for with imp. And then we have seven points left. We can even get uh, minus cooldown on our skills. I don't know if our skills have a lot of cooldowns though. That doesn't. That has. 5 second cooldown, but it's out all the time. This has a 5 second cooldown. Mm. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if you care about cooldowning Wind Devil, though, for one. Uh, we, we might want to get Kraken and use a two-handed weapon. We don't necessarily want to use a shield with this. With this build, we could use a good lightning two-handed weapon and just kite stuff a little bit. Uh... 
so I'll just say for now, since I have to uh, have to get to dinner soon, I'll just say Kraken. Use a two-handed weapon. And then last two points and say, oh, no, 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 no. Chariot is really good for critical. Lots of offensive ability in Chariot. Really good. Perfect. Exactly enough for Chariot. Perfect. <coughs> so this this is a, this is how you kind of decide how to do devotions. This seems like a really good devotion tree for this particular build. Doing the, the crits with the Chariot. Doing the Spear of the Heavens. Uh, every one second for lightning damage and stun. Uh, lowering the lightning resist with Ultos on crits, and you're going to crit a lot, and uh, the Viper gives minus 20% element resist all the time, so on stuff that you hit. So it seems pretty good. So now we can uh, export that. Oh, you're mostly going to, uh, for hardcore especially, you're mostly going to want to put points in physique for health, and then a few in spirit. If you're doing a cunning build, though, with guns, you might need, need to put some in, in cunning as well. For softcore, you can go a lot of cunning if you want to make it like a fun glass cannon, like shooter so i usually put maybe like 10 or 15 in spirit and the rest in physique but there's that build so we're gonna export that and put it in our theory crafting section of this page uh is it a was it a in lightning caster and quiz uh, shaman so I have it linked there in case anybody wants to, to go to this page and find the link. I've also, on my Twitch page, uh, twitch.tv slash parashara, I've got this, a link to my Grim Dawn Builds page here. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you all learned something from this video and perhaps from the last video, and enjoy making those builds, you know, just, uh, I, I feel like it's the most fun part of Grim Dawn for me is coming up with new builds. And I would completely lose that fun if I just looked online and, and, and copied someone's build. So makes the game way way more boring. But uh, yeah, have a have a great have a great day and enjoy Grim Dawn. Thanks so much.